We are remaining standing for reading a sermon text coming from the book of Acts, chapter 13. Again, that's the book of Acts, chapter 13, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean which had been brought up with Herod the, the Tetrarch and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Amen. Amen. morning about 
appointed work. Appointed work. In the book of Acts, we find here Paul and, and Barnabas. And they were chosen by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God called them, appointed them, set them aside for a particular work that they were to do. <coughs> what I want to stress this morning, church, about the appointed work is that there can be perfect order on earth if each individual were to stay in their lane. Did you catch that church? They can be perfect order in the world if, if every individual were to stay precisely in their place. We all have a point of work. Amen. Don't, don't, don't worry about me, church. I'm fine. Don't, don't worry about me. I thought I didn't disclose what was going on, but some people noticed that I was unsteady on my feet and I needed to let them know I'm fine. But, but, but here's what I want you to understand. That, 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 that can be perfect order in the work that God has for all of his creation if everybody would stay in their lane. If you notice that when the Department of Transportation created superhighways, they just didn't put down pavement and leave it there and tell folks to go out here and drive on. No, somebody said, we need to make sure that every individual knows how to go down this black pavement, this asphalt, this concrete, without killing each other. So we need to devise a way and a means as simply as putting a line in the road. Amen. Amen. This morning, all of you, because you're here safely, were able to travel those lanes and, and, and maneuver in and out of them safely by staying where you were until it was possible for you to move otherwise. Amen? Amen. You, you, you didn't sideswipe nobody. You, you didn't run over nobody. You stayed in your lane because you knew, because the rules of the road says, don't cross over until it's clear. Amen. What is it about the divine appointed work? God has assigned each one of us a task. Each one of us, God has set apart to do a particular task, but yet we find folk who will not stay in their place. Amen. Amen. I figured I wouldn't get a whole lot of amen before I get some. But what we have to understand is that, that when we read this text, it says that the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. You see, church, we all have a calling on our life, and God is wise enough to know who to put with. He's wise enough. But the problem arises when we don't understand when God is at work. Because it says here, the Holy Ghost said, separate me. God says, the divine order of things said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. Why? Because those are the ones I want to go and preach to the Gentiles. All the individual together, the Holy Ghost says, set aside. Separate. Separate for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work I have for them. Church, do you not understand that God has work just for you? Amen. That only you can do? Because he has put in you what it takes to get it done? God has perfect knowledge. So he knows who to send to do what task. All the people gathered there, he says, Barnabas and Saul. Reverend Gilmore, you don't know where God is going to send you. 
when he gets ready to send you. But you better believe that when he sends you, he knows that you're the one. You'll be the one for that people, for that flock. It may even be here. We don't know. But wherever God sends you, church, you got to understand something. A lot of times we will be at work and we'll see a job that, that's out there. We say, I'm going to post for that. I'm going to post for that. You may not be the one. Amen. Amen. Just because it pays more money, got a better title, I'm, 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 I'm going to get me that, I'm going to get that. I'm, 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 that's that's going to be perfect. Do you not know that you are where you are because God's hand has been in your life and God has placed you where he wants you to be? Tell me something, are you faithful where you're at? Amen. 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 Don't even do what they're supposed to do where they're at. Come on. <laughs> Fix coffee for an hour. Amen. <laughs> Go by every cube before you're in the building and then say good morning. Amen. You on the clock. <laughs> Have not been paid for over that. But what you got to understand is there is a place that's designed by the maker for you to be in. And you got to know when you're being called by God to go to a particular place at a particular time. Ever wonder why you were born when you were born? <laughs> you ever wonder that? And uh, I'm gonna tell you something. I was telling one of my colleagues the other day, I wouldn't have made it in slavery. <laughs> I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> I wouldn't. If I had been born in slavery times, I wouldn't have made it. And do away with. I would not have been a good, good slave. I wouldn't have been. Amen. Amen. I just wouldn't have been. And I thank God I wasn't born at that time. I'm, I'm thankful to God that I was not born before I was born because I, I would not have done well when the days of protest were going on and, and dogs were being, being, being let loose and fire hoses were being turned. I That's not the point of time. Lord, I want it ever for him to be in. I know it. I need to allow him to go because his personality will not work during those times. I need somebody that I can keep calm and, and reserved and peacefully march. I the church. That's why I know that I was born at the right time for a, for a particular place. As good as I was, Brother Hicks, and as good as I was in football, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God says you're not going to the NFL. As much as I would have loved to go to the NFL, I watch those running backs sometimes. I say, I know I could have done that. I know I could have made that move, made that catch, made that cut, ran that throw. I knew I could have done it, but God says no. That's not my task for you, son. My task is my people. Not to entertain them, but preach the gospel. Yeah. Not to make them stand up on Sunday morning and cheer for a touchdown, but make them stand up on Sunday morning and cheer for me. That's the task that I have in your hands. That is the perfect order that I have in your life. As good as you are, you're not good enough. But what I want you for, you are perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Barnabas and Saul were set apart because God knew that they were precisely what he needed to go to the Gentiles. The second thing I want you to understand, church, is that about the appointed work is that God has perfect knowledge as to who can do it best. What's best fitted for the individual? What's best fitted for the individual. What traits that you have, that you possess? God knows who can direct the choir and who can. Amen. Amen. God knows who can lead and who can't lead. Amen. 
God knows who can be a police officer and who can't be a police officer. I, I wouldn't make a good police officer. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't make a good highway patrol. I wouldn't. My blue light would be more out.
Y'all know we can screw some folk. Y'all know we can screw some folk. Y'all know how we can sound intelligent. Read up on a little something, and man, we we can we up that stuff. Well, let me see here. We get beat as this. You sound all intellectual and come off as all knowing and be dumb as dirt. Amen. But God is beyond us. And He notices what He has placed in us. And see, that's where the problem comes in a lot of times is folk don't see what God has put in people. So God has put some stuff in you that you need to do your job. Some folks can't see it and others have a discerning eye and they can pick up on it. And that's why some folk are elevated to certain positions because they are able to see that that is in them. You remember that teacher? You remember that teacher that was able to teach you when nobody else could teach you? You remember that teacher that, that, that could help you, have helped you understand the problem a whole lot better? Now, now, one teacher told you, but you didn't get it, but this next teacher, all of a sudden, just go click, click, click. Because she knew how to do it. See, God has perfect knowledge of what will have and who's fit for the job. That's why Barnabas and Saul, he said, separate. I need them to go to the Gentiles. I need them because they got the right stuff. And here's the final point I want to make, and I want y'all to hear this. And I said it in passing earlier, but now I want to go back to it to its fullest. God has a full right to call any of his servants to serve him in any way he what are you getting at? That's what I'm getting at is the church is so freaking judgmental <laughs> about who's fit to do the work of the kingdom. <laughs> we want to look at their past. We want to look at their resume. We want to see how they qualify. Life qualifies us for the kingdom. Life. Did you hear what I said? Life. Living in this world qualifies us to be a spokesperson for how God can make a way out of no way And if God want to take the drunk, the crackhead, the hoe, and bring them into church to teach us something, then God's got a right to do it. God's got a right to bring in what we call that nobody and watch them right now, sit them in front of the church and say, now you teach them something. Yeah. Yeah. Then out there, they've embraced life and they've lived life and they endure some hardship and they've endured doing some pain. Some of us in here ain't had to walk for nothing our whole entire life. And we talk about God is a way maker. Yes, because we've always had there was food in our mouth. You need to be down on your butt without a knife in your pocket. And be talk about how God is a way maker. Then you can tell me that you know something about who God is. Don't tell me you know something when you ask me. as a baby's backside. You ain't had a hard day's work in your life. And every time you got in trouble, mom and daddy rescued you. Mm -hmm. There's some of us in here like that. Every time they got us out of trouble. And then when that person that's come in that's been through something, that's got the scars of life written all over them with eyes of bloodshed, yeah. Whose clothes got a stitch to it because they slept in them last night. Right. Yeah, yeah, that individual comes up in God's house and says, Bro, Pastor, I just want to say something. And then everybody turns around and looks at them what they doing up in here. What they doing up in here because God called them, summons them up in here to be a testimony to the saving grace and power and a witness to him being a hero. Oh, 
come in out of the street, back into the church, full point of freedom, blessed in God. I'm glad you do. Now you know how to love coming. The appointed work, the appointed work of God is for God to make the appointment. It says that the Holy Ghost told you. Holy Ghost stopped by and said, separate me. and saw. I got a word for them. They got to go over here to these Gentiles who y'all don't like. They got to go over here and get down with the low and the dirty and the nasty. And those that you say ain't worthy to hear about the kingdom. They got to go because they got what it takes to do the, dog, the job that is at hand. You know how some of us... We just, we just, we just, we just we fight right for our own good. Can't nobody use us. I guess this is I guess I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is, is that God has a point of work and he knows who's fit to do it. Not based on our resume about what school we went to or what grade we, we obtained or what degree we obtained. No, God says life. He knew that they had in them the right stuff. They wouldn't have been the stuff we chose. He says, for my fun, the Holy Spirit for the work I have for their hands. See, everybody in here, listen up. Everybody in here, God got some work for your hands. Yeah. It ain't just for the deacons, it ain't just the trustees, it ain't just those that are in, in auxiliary, it's the entire body of Christ. There is work! And some of the work is set aside just for you. Do you, know how, do you know how hard it is for me? Do you know how hard it is for me to keep up with these young folk and all the terminology and all the changes and all the way they relate and do? Do you know how hard it is for me at 55 to keep up with that? <laughs> <laughs> they can sit here in my face and call me a dog and I wouldn't even know it because the terminology they use. But I need somebody in this congregation that understands where they're coming from and, and can relate to them and, and won't judge them and, and won't, won't, won't run them down, but, but in a way tell them what Christ is about, in a way that they can relate to Christ on their level. They don't need nobody talking down to them, talking about what they ain't and what they don't do. Look, tell me, tell me somebody who in you haven't been young at one time, who in you haven't had to grow up.
Because there's something new coming along all the time. But God says I have a divine appointment. And I know who I need. And that's who I'm going to send. Set them aside. God has perfect knowledge. Stay in your lane. And you can run this country, this church, this community, this world in perfect heart. Amen. 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 Let us stay with